a master of light, an artist of women in debt and depression. Jan Vermeer was one of the best artists in art history, especially the Golden Dutch Age. We will talk about his life and paintings as always we do in Artist Spotlight, but first I will take you to 1632, the year Vermeer was born. We will see what was going on around the world in that time. In 1632, construction of the Taj Mahal began. It was commissioned by the Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, who reigned from 1628 to 1658. This is the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It also houses the tomb of Shah Jahan himself. Europe was going through tough times as the Thirty Year War was continuing to take lives and destroy families. The Thirty Years' War was a conflict fought largely within the Holy Roman Empire from 1618 to 1648. The total death toll was 4.5 to 8 million. The United States is in early stages then, and after the province of Massachusetts Bay and province of New Hampshire was built, now King Charles I grants George Calvert, the first Lord of Baltimore, a royal charter to fund the Maryland colony. And in 1632, in a small town in beautiful city of Delft, Netherlands, Jan Vermeer van Delft, or with the name we know, Jan Vermeer was born. He came from a humble family. His father, Rainer Jansun, was working in textile and silk industry, and he was a middle-class worker. Later in his life, he was going to run this inn called Mechelen, and this inn was going to be a great place to meet, drink, eat, and socialize. Back then, inns were an important part of Dutch city life, a comfortable place where citizens could keep company, eat, drink beer, socialize, and sign business deals. Jansun was also an art dealer. That is how Vermeer was exposed to art and artists at a very young age. When his father died in 1652, Jan Vermeer took over the art dealership of his father. Unfortunately, there isn't much information about Vermeer's mother Digna Baltans. We know that she was 19 and Vermeer's father was 24 when they got married and they got married in 1615 in Amsterdam. She gave birth to Gitroy, Vermeer's older daughter, in 1920. That means 12 year difference between Vermeer and his sister. That's quite an age difference between the siblings. There is no proof that Vermeer went to school, although some art historians debate a range of possible tutors. But it is almost definite that Vermeer was inspired by the contemporary Dutch woman known as the Finschilders, which literally means the fine painters. This woman reproduced reality in small scale, naturalistic and accurately detailed paintings. While he was only 21 years old, Vermeer joined the Guild of St. Luc on December 29, 1653. This St. Luc's Guild was the most significant and prestigious guild for painters and other artists in this period in Europe. Let me put it this way, Leonardo da Vinci was also accepted in the Guild of St. Luc in 1472 when he was only 20 years old. The year he got accepted into guild, at the age of 21, he got married. His wife's name was Katharina Bones. We are assuming that three or four of his paintings include Katharina. Well, Katharina had just moved into Delft and they moved from Gouda with her mother Maria. They were a devoted Catholic family and Vermeer was raised in a Protestant family in Netherlands. Around that time, if you switch from Protestant to Catholicism, then it was tolerated, but definitely not encouraged. Well, it's safe to say that switching to Catholicism was a very big risk to take, and Vermeer did it for his love. They got married in a Catholic church in 1653.
After they got married, they moved into Maria's spacious apartment. He made the bright, spacious upper floor his studio, and he made his paintings there. Katharina gave birth to 15 children, and four of them died soon after birth. One of the most interesting facts about Jan Vermeer is that the first few of his paintings were actually inspired by religion and mythology. Two of these paintings are Christ in the House of Martha and Mary, 1655, and Diana and her Companions, 1656. It's in the year 1656 that he changed his inspiration and almost solely painted concepts of everyday life. Many of these paintings portray women who are busy doing daily chores. In Golden Dutch Age, paintings and portraits were usually the domain of wealthy and elite, but since Vermeer did not come from a rich or noble family, his domestic scenes offered a rare glimpse into the world of the middle class. There are many things that make Vermeer different from his peers. First of all, the majority of Vermeer's work concentrated on two topics that 17th century artists would not be interested in. women and the home. In his paintings, you see female figures 40 times, whereas you see male figures only 14 times. Many of his scenes actually centered around a home setting, a domestic life. So some historians believe that the setting in his paintings is actually his own house, and also the people in it, the figures in it, are either his family or his servants. 16 of his paintings include a young lady, and this young woman either reads or writes in six of them. Then, instead of seeing them like naked, lying down on the couch, we actually see them writing, reading, and doing some important housework, just working, how hardworking females are and women are, it's just amazing that Vermeer was actually focusing on that part instead of what his peers used to do. The women that appear in Vermeer's work are not the typical beauties that appear in the Italian paintings produced at this time, and they are not half naked either. Instead, they are realistic, homely women whose appeal derives from the warm, inviting, and safe environment in which they are presented. In the 17th century, the Netherlands was experiencing not only a golden age of art, but also of exploration, as Dutch seafarers explored further and further. This expansion gave rise to increased commercialization, and trade became an epicenter of Dutch life. This meant that people who had not necessarily been born with wealth and status could achieve it. As a result, there was a growing interest in the domain of the house. The artist understands the psychology of the female portrait, and therefore many of Vermeer's subjects have novel and expressive faces. This marks one of the first times in Dutch art that the female was the focus for her own sake. Daylight plays a very important role in Vermeer's painting, and usually, if you pay attention, it comes from the left from a window, I don't know, but the source of light definitely most of the time comes from left. He uses the light to highlight important elements and to set the composition of the artwork. Often there is a second invisible window in the painting when looking at the shadows. And while girl with the pearl earring doesn't have a window, looking at the use of light and shadows it's clear there is a light source on the left side to draw the attention to the girl's face. Yes, definitely Vermeer was influenced by Finchilders, whose style is usually very static, but there was some kind of dynamism, or dynamism, anyway, in Vermeer's paintings. How you ask? Let's look. His brush strokes often leave his subjects slightly blurred, creating the illusion of movement. Similarly, he often animates figures by showing them in the midst of an activity rather than in a rigid posture. Vermeer also changes the configuration of his figure halfway through. He changes the angle of the certain body part and boom, you have the movement. Also, his use of light definitely helps to give this vibrant energy to us. Although Vermeer is not recorded to have painted some still lives, 
A favorite genre within the movement, of course, his portraits and scenes do still have the reality and it still captures the real and even the ordinary rather than inventing or exaggerating. Another striking feature of Vermeer's paintings are the maps you see on the walls. The Netherlands was the center of 17th century cartography with important map makers working out the major cities and the expansion of the East and West India. Maps and charts then became very common possessions and their appearance in Vermeer paintings helped us to understand how the cartographical boom was felt around those times. In fact, the same map of the Low Countries appears in three of Vermeer's paintings. This suggests that he may have owned it himself. Some scientists believe that Vermeer used camera obscura to create his paintings. This is a technique and this is how it works. This tool projects a scene onto a wall in a dark room, which was located in another room. This would have made Vermeer's work much more easier to paint. But if this was the case, you'd think that then he needed to paint everything upside down. Here is why. Rays of light travel in straight lines and change when they are reflected and partly absorbed by an object. It retains information about the color and brightness of the surface of the object. Lighted objects reflect rays of light in all directions. A small enough opening in a barrier admits only the rays that travel directly from different points in the scene on the other side and these rays form an image of that scene where they reach a surface opposite from the opening, just like what's happening in our eyes. The fact that Vermeer didn't use initial lines in his paintings and also he has a perfect perspective in his paintings, that kind of brings that probably he used camera obscura. Vermeer used the entire color spectrum in his paintings. He was using mostly earthy ochre and some umber colors and he was using opposite to it um, lapis lazuli which is a pigment. It's a very important, very expensive pigment that was exported from Afghanistan that time and the lapis lazuli makes the ultramarine color that we know but because of its quality, its high quality, it just brings the perfect base color for Vermeer paintings, especially when he was making red. The Girl with the Wine Glass is one of the paintings that he uses lapis lazuli in a very lavish way. Although it appears completely red, Vermeer painted a layer of lapis lazuli as the base, giving the material a bright sheen. Vermeer's technical understanding reflects that of the old masters of the Italian Renaissance, particularly the observation that objects take on the tones of the things around them. The lace maker was completed around 1669-1670 and now it's in Laura Paris. It's among the smallest of Vermeer's paintings. The size of this painting is only 9.6 inches by 8.3 inches. Some details are obscure and some details are really specific. So this is a very interesting style that Vermeer had. The girl with a pearl earring. We all know this painting, of course. And what does it say, right? It's one of the other portraits like he did, but it is mostly dark. You don't see a window, but you see that light is coming again from a source very strongly from, again, the left side. And you see some kind of turban. Turban is showing there was some kind of trade going on between the east uh, and west and that east effect is showing itself as a turban there and the pearl what does pearl mean pearl in the 17th century paintings meant wealth it was a very important sign of status 11 of Vermeer's women wear pearls and critics even say that there's a sheen on their faces created by this silvery palette and texture in the oils. Pearls create exotism. The painting may also help to make connections between European art at the time. Scholars have proposed that the girl with a pearl earring is based on a portrait by Italian artist Guido Reni. 
In 1971, Vermeer's famous painting Love Letter was stolen in a very badly planned heist. On September 23, 1971, Mario Roymans, a 21-year-old thief, just goes into the Fine Art Palace in Brussels and tries to steal this piece but <laughs> he couldn't plan very well because the painting didn't fit from the window he came in so what he had to do he got a potato peeler and he cut the canvas from four sides and he rolled it up and put it in his back pocket and that's how he ran away of course they got him after two weeks because duh he was not very smart the painting was severely damaged due to the thief's recklessness during the two weeks in which it was missing. He later buried it in the forest where it sustained water damage and hid it under his mattress where it was crushed. Oh goodness. Artist in his studio, also known as the allegory of painting or painter, actually tells the story of Vermeer himself. What is the role of painting in painter's life and other people's life who actually pose for a portrait. Some people say that the woman in the portrait is the Greek goddess Fame, or we know her as also Osa. Osa is known as the personification of the known or famous and her wrath is scandalous rumors. Jan Vermeer's financial situation suffered a lot after France invaded Holland in 1672. Nobody was giving him any more commission work or he was not dealing any more art. It, art business was suffering in overall. So he went into a great depression and great debt. His wife claimed that because of the political situation, he couldn't sell any of his art or he couldn't deal anybody else's art, really. He died from a very short illness, very suddenly, and when he died, he left his 11 children and his wife in great debt. His wife said probably he died due to stress and depression. He had never been a prolific painter and the few pieces he did produce were largely purchased by a single collector, Peter van Riven. This prevented demand from increasing enough to boost the value of his work. His preference for rich and therefore expensive colors probably didn't help his financial situation either. He painted very slowly. Because of this, he was only to complete three paintings every year. In the immediate aftermath of his death, he was mourned, but he was not celebrated because nobody knew about him except Delft area. What happened though, 100 years later, two historians were going to discover him and his artwork, and then Vermeer legacy was going to start. Because he wasn't famous outside of his own hometown of Delft, and to a lesser degree The Hague, his work fell into obscurity for two centuries after his death. In fact, many of his works weren't even being attributed to him, but to better known artists such as Matsu or Miris. Theophile Thor Bourget, a French journalist, studied Vermeer's artwork and also he was an art critic, so he performed a very thorough research and he published his research in the newspaper then only then in 1860 suddenly his paintings skyrocketed in value want to see some of the Vermeer's paintings well they are displayed over seven countries now all over the place 
His inspiration was definitely his father who introduced him to art and art galleries. His meticulous work, his focus on detail and high quality color what made him very, very special. It is so sad that he died poor and depressed. There was so much responsibility on his shoulders with his 11 children and a wife to look after. Unfortunately, just like Van Gogh, he couldn't see that how famous he became in the future. Definitely, the way how he portrayed women in comparison to his other peers around that time is definitely, definitely praiseworthy. And his way of using that ultramarine color is wickedly smart. We will always remember Vermeer. We will definitely continue to study Vermeer and how he used the color, how he used the light, how he brought science together with paintings. And we will always remember him as one of the biggest artists in the art history of the world. Let's see who's gonna be in our artist spotlight next time. Till then, bye.